Good place now. Relax, breathe, smile. You've entered into your element, the home of origin, the home of intelligence and beauty, where relevant topics are discussed, where what you think counts, and where superior is the norm. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. You know what I'm craving? A little perspective. That's it? I'd like some fresh, clear, well-seasoned perspective. Can you suggest a good wine to go with that? With, uh... What, sir? Perspective. Fresh out, I take it. I am... Uh... Very well. Since you're all out of perspective and no one else seems to have it in this bloody town, I'll make you a deal. You provide the food, I'll provide the perspective. Which would go nicely with a bottle of Cheval Blanc. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's show, we're discussing something that's near and dear to my heart. We're talking about purpose. I know a lot of people have heard me talk about purpose. It's one of my favorite topics. I get it. We're talking about finding your purpose, what your purpose is, advancing that purpose, especially in the regards of what it means to be an entrepreneur. You know, in life, a lot of times we figure that you have to, like, start a business. you got to start a company to be an entrepreneur, that you can't just go along with whatever your purpose is and actually make that work. And I think a lot of times we forget the fact that we have responsibilities, that we have a responsibility to the outcomes of things that come about. And I think sometimes we choose not to look at that responsibility because it's easier for us to, to play dom, to not deal with it, than it is to step up to the plate. And honestly, for most of our listeners, I know for a fact, you have stepped up to the plate and you're constantly working on that. Bill, how are you doing tonight? Doing fine, Ashley. And, uh, you know, I am super excited about this uh, topic tonight because because it's, it's something near and dear to my heart. You, you know my life story. Um, it took me several years to find my purpose in life. Uh, so I'm real interested in what you have to say tonight. Awesome, me too. I always like to hear what I'm going to say. I don't know. <laughs> I never know until you're, you're I'm right like there. That. You know? You always like to hear what you have to say, Ashley. You're just going to like that. Oh, I just love my own voice. <laughs> I'd love to hear myself talk. You know, honestly, um, for a lot of people in radio, we do. We do like to hear our voice. You know, it's funny when you play back audio or you're listening to the show, people cringe when they're on the show. But I... I just love listening to my own voice. Well, there you go. And especially to hear it live over the radio. I know, right? That's so cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, okay, so join us tonight, Rick Sapio. Rick Sapio has actually just created this really cool thing called a Billion Entrepreneurs Foundation. Rick, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you here. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm real interested in uh, what he's uh, bringing in tonight because uh, it's, it's like, uh, you know, making everybody an entrepreneur. I never thought of that before. Yeah, me neither. I think it's kind of cool. And we're all talking about purpose. And you know, the reason why we call this show Perspectives is for obvious reasons, because we all have our unique perspective. I'm not over there just like pushing my perspective down your throat, but I am finding people that actually have a communal perspective, an option about things, something that actually gives life to stuff. It doesn't shut things down. Um, You know, let's talk first off. I know, Rick, I know that you have a background um, in, in entrepreneurship yourself, and I know that you've been in business uh, for yourself, but I know that you're creating some stuff now. Let's talk about purpose. You know, how do you feel about purpose? What, what does purpose mean to you? Purpose is a very deep and meaningful topic to me, and I think it goes all the way back to my childhood. I, I am the seventh of nine children, and I remember uh, when I, you know, th- think about it as parents. Now I have four children myself and we want to protect our kids from everything. But I remember first grade it was my first day of school and my mother said, okay, you're in first grade. Let me show you how to do your own laundry. And that very simple thing of her teaching me how to do my own laundry gave me purpose. That's kind of where it started. And then she said, let me teach you how to cook your own breakfast. And I think about, uh, my parents, and what they went through raising nine children. And then we got to fast forward a few more years after that. I don't know if you know the the background, but when I was 11, my dad came home for dinner one day, and he said, I've got really bad news to share with the family. He said, "Um, I've got cancer, and they've given me six weeks to live. Now, you have to understand, my mother had a 10th grade education. My father had a 10th grade education, and we didn't have any money. So, uh, unfortunately, my dad passed away. The good news was it took about two and a half years. And during that time, he taught us all how to be independent and self-sufficient. 
That's pretty cool. I mean, so, I have a lot of, I mean, you know, with my family, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, they taught me, my mom taught me how to do laundry and that kind of sort of thing. I wasn't going to get away with that. I had to cook my own food. I think that says something. And I know that a lot of people in this generation, though, that's coming up is not really being taught the same thing. I, I would agree with that. I mean, in my case, my, my mom did let me wait till I was in sixth grade before I yeah. started had to do it. So, so she, she let me slide at least a little bit on that. But yeah, I mean, by the time, especially by the time I got into high school, I, I had to do my own laundry, had to cook my own meals, uh -huh. had to get myself to school and back from school. And uh, she wasn't going to uh, hound me on doing my homework. If I didn't, well, hey, yeah. you know, you, you, you can uh, go... You know, dig ditches. Actually, she used to say that to me, Ricky. You, you can either go to college or you can dig ditches. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to see you out there digging a ditch, Bill. I mean, uh, I'm going to check that out. I'm not good at it. Let's let's, let's put it that way. I've tried. I'm going to I'm going to give you a spoon. I'll give you a spoon, not a shovel. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to say how important this is to me. So, my father passes away when I'm 13, and my mother had a massive nervous breakdown. She never recovered. So we went from having two parents and nine kids to having no parents and no money. And, and how old were you at the time? 13. 13. So now, living about five miles outside of New York City in the 70s, I'm 51 now, uh, it was an unbelievable time. There was a lot of massively negative influences. But what did our parents teach us? They taught us about independence. They taught us about entrepreneurship. I remember whether, whether it was raining or whether it was zero degrees, I had to deliver the New York Daily News seven days a week at 5.30 a.m. I had to do that. So the question I ask myself today is why do parents protect their kids from these incredibly important life lessons, lessons like you have to do it no matter what. Lessons like responsibility. And so it was during those years that my purpose was born. And my purpose was to be an entrepreneur and to inspire entrepreneurship in others. So that's where the seeds were planted. I love that. That's very cool. And, you know, I agree with you on that. I think that a lot of times they uh, parents try to protect their children. And I know we've all heard of, like, helicopter parents or what have you, where they're always watching their child. And I, I think sometimes you have to let your child grow up. You have to give them the seeds, the ability to have purpose. And I always talk about purpose is passion. And I always talk about how purpose a lot of times goes back to your childhood, goes back to the things that you loved when you were young. And a lot of times we, you know, encapsulate these ideas of what society decides. Like, oh, society wants me to do this or my parents think that this will never be a good idea. I can never make money on this, so this can't be a purpose. And, and I think also sometimes people lose sight of what they're doing. For example, if it's, a, if it's a mother that's raising a child and they see that as, oh, well, that's just my duty. You know, and it's like, well, I think there's more to that. You decided to have a child. You have this child to, up, you know, to bring up in, the, in, in this world. You, that's, that's part of your purpose, it seems like to me. Well, you know, Ashley and, and Rick, uh, I just recently uh, graduated from college again. Um, I went back to college uh, uh, to uh, change careers. And uh, so I'm twice as old as a lot of these kids in in college. And I can tell you from, from the first time I went to college, I really didn't take it all that seriously. You know, just, you know, seize and, and go. But this time around, especially since I'm paying it more. Seize and go. Yeah. Uh, you know, 2.0 and go. Um, but, uh, you know, this time around, I paid for it myself. And uh, all of a sudden, it became a lot more valuable. Uh, to me, I was a lot more serious this time, and I look around at, at a lot of these kids. They don't want to be there. This is just four more years of high school to them. Well, yeah, um, they didn't take a break. They didn't go through what you went through. You know, the thing is, like, th their parents are paying no. for it. They don't see yeah. the value. It's like, you know, my dad always said, you know, when you get things easy, you don't see the value behind it, even though sometimes I disagree with that. But for the most part, it does seem logical. You know, and, and, and just one, one real quick uh, anecdote, at Rick. Uh, you know, uh, our I think our family backgrounds, although we come from different uh, cultural backgrounds probably, you know, I grew up in rural West Texas. Uh, but uh, I think my family taught me a lot of the same things of responsibility at an early age. I had to buy my own first vehicle. Mm. And now my mom gave me some money per week for gas, but I had to buy my own vehicle. I had to keep up the insurance. I had to keep the, up the repairs. That was on me. So I had to go get a job to uh, to, to do all that. And if if I ran out of gas and couldn't go out to, uh, with my friends on the weekend, oh, well. Mm -hmm. you know? I think society and government see their role as removing responsibility from people. And that's the sad thing about our current state. So it's up to us as responsible citizens to realize that we have a duty to find our purpose in the world and to take responsibility for manifesting that purpose in the world. So responsibility starts, in my view, with finding your purpose and teaching people how to find theirs. You want your kids and your siblings and your employees, you want them to find their purpose. They're going to be more fulfilled. 
Now, once someone is on purpose, and that's not an easy thing, you have to find it. You have to wrestle it to the ground. And we were talking earlier that purpose is something that we have to choose. Purpose is not something that's going to tackle you. And I got married very late in life, one and only time, my one and only time. And you uh, thought you were just going to get tackled, right? You didn't yeah. think you had to ask. <laughs> yeah. Here I am. And, you know, ultimately, I had to choose one woman. And I, I, I'm, I'm told there's three billion women in the world. I had to choose one. Purpose is a lot like that. I think we're confused because we're we're uh, uh, seeing so many options for our lives. And the reality is we have to choose a purpose. Once you choose it, I believe providence moves. And providence moves and providence finds ways to help you. For, for me, for example, choosing to inspire entrepreneurship as my life's purpose, it moved me to realize, holy cow, we can have an entrepreneur in every home. That would be the ultimate vision. That's the vision for 20 years out. And that led to the movement called A Billion Entrepreneurs, which is a new movement. But 20 years from now, I envision a world where there are actually a billion people on purpose. Wouldn't that be great? I think it's awesome. I think it's wonderful. I think that a lot of times, too, you know, a lot of times we see the word purpose, we see the word, uh, you know, we see that as something like possibly a hobby. A lot of times people say, oh, well, I'm good at this or I like doing that. And it's true. I mean, what you said, Rick, is like you really do have to focus on that one thing. And, and I think sometimes when we figure out our purpose, it's easy to try to hide. It's easy to try to sit back. And I think it was about, I don't know, it was about a year ago when I did that show on um the Burgess DNA cheek swab test for purpose. And it really is 99%, you know, positive each time. I mean, it's correct. And basically, you know, your purpose is unique and different for anyone and everyone. It's, it's just a different thing. And it really, honestly, if you don't really live up to your purpose, you're not living up to the reason why you're really here. We're going to talk more about that when we come back. We're going to talk more about how, you know, how to really figure out how to hone in on that purpose, how to understand your passion, you know, as well as putting that into motion. Because a lot of times you can sit there and figure out your purpose, but whether or not you actually act on that purpose is a totally different story. And I think sometimes people feel Feel almost like they can't move, like they're stuck. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about that as well. As well as later on in the hour, we're gonna discuss entrepreneurship, what it really means to be an entrepreneur. We're gonna also get some more information on this new movement, which I think is very interesting. So stay tuned because perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. We'll be back in two shakes. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. The water's warm and there's a swim-up bar. Glass of Perspective, anyone? Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's show, we are discussing purpose. Finding your true purpose, advancing that purpose, and also realizing more about what it means to be an entrepreneur. You know, a lot of times we don't really realize what that word is. We feel like we have to go up, you know, go rent or lease a space, find out a business, you know, hire a bunch of employees, and that makes you, you know, an entrepreneur. And that's not necessarily what we're talking about tonight. You know, but we were talking about purpose right before break. And I think a lot of people might remember the show I did recently on the DNA cheek swab test for purpose. And, you know, it's effective 99% of the time. And it's really based on the fact that we all have a unique purpose. We all have a different reason for doing things and a different reason for being here. And a lot of times that goes back to your childhood. You know, around the ages of five and six, you really begin to find your unique personal interests, the things that you really love, those things that are kind of indigenous to you. And, you know, you're inquisitive about things as a child. You want to understand and wrap your brain around things as a child. And I think those are the times when you realize what you truly love. Right on break, we were actually discussing, you know, purpose. And Rick, you were talking about how you help people find purpose. And you said that there's basically a strategy there. What was that? A very simple tool that anybody can do right now is find the things that you're really, really good at doing. You can make a list of all the things you're great at doing. Then oftentimes I find that people are great at doing something, but they don't like doing it. So the next list is of those things that you're great at doing, what do you absolutely passionately love to do? So find what the intersection is between those two things. And then lastly, what does the world need? And if you could find the thing that the world needs that you're also uh, really good at doing and you love to do it. And I think I'm sitting across the table from someone named Ashley who's in her 
uh, in that uh, intersection of those th- three things. That's your purpose. World needs it. You love to do it, and you're great at it. So that's the exercise. That makes sense. I mean, it makes, it makes clear sense. And for some people, though, I understand they don't really know what purpose means. And a lot of times, you know, if, if you're in that position, you have to really start with this exercise. What do you love to do? What are you good at? And then where does that intersect with being happy but also providing something for the world? You know, Ashley, uh, there's an old saying, uh, find something you like to do and find a get way, uh, find a way to get paid to do it. That's true. So I kind of wonder if that's, you know, kind of sort of the same thing we're talking about here. Yeah, I mean, we're all talking about the same thing. But I think people are afraid to find their purpose. I read an article just recently that said more depression medication is sold in the United States than all other countries of the world combined. I wonder why that is. We have everything here. And I think it's because we're afraid to peel the onion and find our purpose. So we medicate ourselves and we distract ourselves and we get excited about things that really aren't relevant. So, you know, I think that if you're listening and this intrigues you in any way, do this simple exercise that may take five minutes. I like it. And, and I think that you're right about that. I've actually, I'm writing a fourth book right now. We're almost done. And part of it is about depression. Part of it is about anxiety. And it's about the medication that's being taken in the United States. And it is amazing how many people suffer from, you know, major depression, depression, anxiety disorder. There's all kinds of different, you know, possibilities here. But it's based around the fact that people haven't really found what they're here for. They don't understand what they're supposed to be doing. And I know a lot of people listening out there are going, hey, I already figured this out. I'm, 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 already, I'm already on the upturn. I figured out my purpose. And there are some people listening tonight that really have no idea. And anytime I walk into a restaurant order, I actually overhear people talking about, I don't know what to do. I really don't know. I, I'm, I'm completely lost for what I can do now. You know, I, I think that and we hit on this in the first segment. Uh, there's really no pressure or reason for a young person to go through that. It wasn't too, too terribly long ago in this country where by the time you were, say, in, at least in your middle teens anyway, you were expected to help put food on the table. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you better figure out quick, uh, you know, cause I mean, it wasn't even that long ago when a lot of people didn't even bother finish high, finishing high school, you know, they went to work, uh, right. to support their families. You're zeroing in on the fact that when there's no pressure put on us as individuals, there's no motivation. And my wife and I like to take students and, and pull them to our home to live with us because we've got four young kids and we've had four students in a row that were completely and totally unmotivated and at the same time depressed. Now, you talking mm-hmm. college students, Rick? Or? The college students, okay. yes. Yeah. And so they were unmotivated and depressed. And depressed. So how do they medicate themselves? Obviously, de- depression medication. We're four for four. So my wife and I are really good at picking students to live with us. But <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Rick. Good job. <laughs> but the truth of the matter was they're addicted to their cell phone devices and there's no motivation. And I asked him what the common thread was. You know, by in, you know, inquiring, the common thread was mommy and daddy give them three credit cards each. They don't have to worry uh. about anything. They don't have to provide for themselves. There's no pressure put on them to do anything. So what do we expect? And I think that's global at this point. But um, you think it's global? Oh, it's going global, but certainly in the U.S. for sure. You know, that's interesting you bring that up because it's true. I mean, think about anybody listening tonight that has never worked out a day in your life. You really don't know what it's about. But for people that have worked out, they like to run, they like to go to the gym. You know how it feels to go a week or two without working out. You know how you feel very sluggish, tired. Um, overweight and you feel kind of like you're you know it's worthless like you feel like this worthless feeling and I, and I know people I, I felt it before where it's been like two weeks and I'm thinking my god so think about if you've never had that drive and somebody just gives you everything and, and I know parents want to make it easier for their kids I never want my kid to go through what I went through you know but at the same point in time it's like there's a lot of kids there's like a huge percentage of kids moving back home with their parents right now because they have no drive or they never left home in the first place like I said I just uh graduated college again and uh it, that uh especially the school i went to that it was commuter school basically and they're still living at home there's no incentive like you were saying actually uh for these kids uh, you know to uh, actually get out there and find what their purpose is and then they end up uh, you know taking uh you know degrees that uh you know let's let's just say it's a challenge 
to uh, make the level of, of living that they are accustomed to. Or they start taking, you know, prescription medication for what have you. Um, and then also that also moves up to the other. Or maybe illicit, other types of medications illicit too. drugs, you know, <laughs> illicit drugs and alcohol and yeah. things like that. Because, you know, when people are bored, I've talked about this day in and day out. Boredom creates problems. Anytime you're bored and you got nothing to do, I know everybody in the studio, I know everybody else I know, they can raise their hand and say, one time when I was bored, I really screwed up my life. I mean, you know, heck, Keenan actually enrolled in the military and ended up going to war because he was bored. I mean, we have friends that have done some crazy stuff over boredom. You know, but when you're sitting there looking at a child that has no, uh, you know, a- ambition whatsoever, I mean, they have everything handed to them. It's like, where are they going to find that ambition? The only way they can do it is to create themselves. And they've been given everything to almost discreate, you know. So so maybe is the solution uh, to uh, encourage our parents out there to, uh, you know, maybe not give – everything to your kids that you know maybe they shouldn't get everything they want well, it seems to not work i think the solution is to illuminate the issue like we are like you are like a billion entrepreneurs the movement is and it's all about getting people to realize that i will be much more fulfilled as a human being if i'm on purpose and if we start with that premise maybe it will wake more people up to their potential right there I was listening to you on TED Talks um, recently. I was I was actually listening to some of those videos that were online. Um, so explain to me real quick. I know what entrepreneurship is, and I understand how how you frame it. But explain to our listeners how you're defining um, entrepreneur at this point. All right. So if you go back to the beginning, what where was the word entrepreneur derived from? And it's a French word originally. And the very original definition that I could find was taking a level of resources from one level to a higher level. So most people think an entrepreneur is a business owner, but that's not what the word means. So I started thinking about it. If I'm a stay-at-home mom and I'm lazy and I could care less about my kids, I'm not taking that resource to a higher level. But if, on the other hand, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I decide that I want to create a program for my kids to excel in various activities, I'm taking responsibility for the resources that I have in front of me. If I live in a trailer park and I'm collecting unemployment and I say, you know what, I'm going to start taking responsibility. I'm going to uh, not take government handouts. I'm going to go get a job. And so I started looking out in the world and I found a woman recently who uh, was an addict and living under a bridge, was homeless for three years. And 10 years later, this woman runs a business. So started thinking about now what's the distinction between all these different people? And the distinction is at some point people have a choice. They can choose to take responsibility for outcomes. And so I decided that the movement was going to be about changing the definition of the word entrepreneurship to mean simply someone who takes responsibility for outcomes, full stop. I like that. And you know, that actually resonates in my own life. You know, I have... I've had countless great friends in the past, and, and, and some people might be listening as well, and, and I'm proud of a lot of my friends. I'm proud of everybody, but there's a point when you look back and you say, I moved myself from point A to point B, and I'm here, and a lot of people get astounded that you're able to move up and to change your life, and a lot of people choose not to, and I had someone ask me a couple of days ago, um, Ashley, does everybody get the wake-up call? They go, does everybody get it? And I said, okay. Yes, they do. And they said, but I, I, I don't understand. If everybody gets the wake-up call, then why isn't everybody awake? I don't get it. And I said, everybody has the same amount of choices. So that's key for everybody listening tonight. You know, the universe doesn't just, like, awaken a quarter of the people and tell the rest of the people, sorry, you know, maybe next time. No, it's like everybody gets awakened. If you choose to wake up, it's one thing. If you choose to wake up and then turn it back off, that's another thing as well. And some of us get numerous wake-up calls. I mean, like, it doesn't stop. You know, like, it's not like they call you one time at the hotel to wake you up and you don't answer, so it's done. No, the, the universe keeps calling and keeps calling and keeps calling, and eventually you either put it on snooze and you say, I'm never answering this phone, I'm turning this phone off, I'm pulling it out of the wall, and I'm throwing it away or I'm running over it with the car, or, you know what, I'm actually going to get up and I'm going to step up to the plate and I'm going to figure out how to be responsible for my life. When we return, we're going to be talking more about um, entrepreneurship, what Rick's doing with this process, what he's doing with um, some things that are going on on Kickstarter as well, how you can actually be an entrepreneur in your own life, and also just a little bit more about purpose, how to really realize that you're on point, that you're on purpose in your life. So stay tuned, because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in, uh, we'll be back in two shakes.
This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess on 570 KLIF. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's show, we've been discussing purpose, what it means to find your purpose, as well as advancing that to the next level and talking about entrepreneurship, what entrepreneurship really means. And, you know, a lot of times right before break, we were discussing purpose. And I know that for a lot of people listening, you found it or you're still looking. But I'll tell you one thing. Everybody gets the wake up call. Everybody has the option to find what they want to do in life. It's just they don't give it to a few people. Like the universe doesn't just say, oh, I'm going to bestow this to this one third of people and these other two thirds of people. Well, they're just screwed. That's just not the way it is. We all get the wake up call. We all get the same choices. It just depends on the choice that we make. We choose to either go with it and deal with it or we choose choose maybe to go the other direction or we choose to pull the phone out of the wall, run over it and not want to hear that ringing tone any longer. Rick Sapio joins us tonight in studio, which is so neat because he just started a new foundation, the Billion uh, Entrepreneurs Foundation. And he also has a project um, going on right now, too. Tell us more about that. Rick. We actually have filmed over 150 hours of a movie. We, we have a theatrical release coming out next spring, so it would be the spring of 2015, and the movie's entitled The Billion Entrepreneurs, and the, and the purpose of the movie, which we call a catalyzing statement because we want it to catalyze action, is imagine an entrepreneur in every home. And I think about that, and it really makes my heart sing. Could you imagine 20 years from now that we have a world with an entrepreneur in every home? That means a billion people taking responsibility for outcomes. And that's my life's purpose in action right there. Well, now real quick, Ashley, I, I just want to clarify something right quick because I think you said it earlier in the show. Before I met you today, I think of the word entrepreneur in the kind of a narrow business you know, sense where somebody's starting a business and they're kind of you know in it to make a profit off of you know whatever it is they're doing. But you, but you, you mean something like broader. Yeah. I mean, when you say that an entrepreneur is someone that takes risk in business, which is what most people think, it gives everybody an excuse. Well, I can't have a business, which is nonsense to begin with. But now I'm taking all the excuses away. Your job today, moving forward, is to take responsibility for finding your purpose first and then manifesting that purpose in the world. Anybody can do that. Mother Teresa didn't need a business to be on purpose. That's so true. And, and it's interesting you brought up that, the whole concept of the catalyzing statement because I think that was interesting. It was a few years ago when I figured out mine because I think a lot of times we can figure out our purpose and you're like running a mile a minute going, I got my purpose. I know what to do, but what do I really want to do with this? You know, And I think that statement really creates – the direction, don't you think? So so what was yeah. y'all's catalyzing statement basically going into this project? Yeah, well, the catalyzing statement was an entrepreneur in every home. And just to define it for the listeners, a catalyzing statement in our view, we actually trademark that phrase. It's the get to for your purpose. And the analogy or an example of that would be when Bill Gates wanted to um, create the best software company in the world. Things weren't going very well at the beginning until he came up with a catalyzing statement. And what this statement is, this is something that emotionally connects to your stakeholders. So he said what? A computer on every desktop. Mm -hmm. And the most famous catalyzing statement in my view is, we're going to send a man to the moon and return him safe to the earth. That catalyzing statement was so powerful that John F. Kennedy died eight months later and it still happened. That's a powerful catalyzing statement. So ours is an entrepreneur in every home. And we think the world will be a hell of a lot of a better place with an entrepreneur in every home. Well, it also puts purpose into action. You know, the statement is kind of like, a, you know, this is the statement of A to B. And I think a lot of times when people have found their purpose and they don't know, this can really direct you. It's like some people call it a mission statement. Some people call it an objective. But it's really just a simple sentence that you can keep in your mind, keep in your heart, and know that's the direction you're going. So let's talk about this, this entrepreneur in every home. I think it's interesting because it's it's very it's very true. The concept of being able to be responsible for the outcome outcome of what you do. That's really what it's all about. That's what it boils down to. And a lot of people don't realize that they are responsible for these outcomes, for, for what happens in their life, possibly also for their family. And that's a big deal. Yeah, I think that we're trained in society today, for whatever reason, to not take responsibility. And I mentioned those four different women that live with us. One of them uh, was showing me the different medications that she was on. She was on 11 different medications. Holy moly. One was for anxiety. Are one was you for, joking? Not joking. Wow. And I said, where did you get these? And, and she said, well, the doctor uh, on campus. We're all taking them. And there was depression and anxiety and weight loss and wake up and go down. 11. I'm not exaggerating. So what were those pills? 
Those were pills telling her, I don't have to take responsibility. I don't even have to take responsibility for going to bed at night because the pill will do it for me. And I don't even have to take responsibility for anything. I mean, think about 11 pills. And let me, FYI, let me sidebar on this one. You know, being my background, being that I am a certified counselor and a life coach, one little sidebar about medication is any of these medications that you take change your brain chemistry. Okay, it changes it. It remaps it. It starts changing things in your brain that you don't realize. And that's why it takes sometimes two weeks for a pill to build up in your system is because it's basically remapping your brain. These things are not taken lightly. I mean, when you take pills, you really need to think what you're taking them for. And some of these pills can take away your drive. And also some of them can make you very foggy headed, like you can't even focus on things. And then other ones are like basically keeping you up like you should go work out. You can get some sleep. But all this is doing it for you, I guess. So why? You know? Oh yeah, abs- absolutely. It's, I, I think a lot of society th- these days is based upon it's not my fault, it's someone else's fault. So you know, let's go sue them and you know get some money out of them or you know something like that. Yeah, we got l- political leaders that would never take responsibility. It's always someone else's fault. That's interesting that you point out. But this is what these people are looking up to. I believe we live in a society that puts a f- primary focus on fame, no matter how they got there, and takes the focus away from getting things done, being responsible, being independent, being entrepreneurial, and ultimately having a life that's purposeful. Which, by the way, Ashley, I I mean, we could easily, we were actually talking about this during the break, we could easily go down a political commentary, you know, road here. Oh, my God, we could, but it's above that. But I was going to say, you know, Rick was telling us, you know, his program, is this is neither left nor it's right. I mean, political leaders on both sides of the aisle can be faulted for this. I mean, we're we're trying to rise above that. Think about this, too. You know, isn't it funny how, remember how people always tell you this when you're walking by, don't work too hard. Or, you know, I'm barely working. Or, you know, that, that kind of thing. It's like, when did it become a bad deal to work? Yeah. I mean, like, I'm at work all the time. And I know people listening can attest to this because you might have come by the studio. You know my hours. You know what I'm doing. I have people that come by all the time going, I can't believe you're still here. Or how about the I old, mean, it's like, 10 o'clock at night. What are you doing? Well, about, I'm, I'm, I'm still preparing. How about the old, uh, it's good enough for government work <laughs> joke? <laughs> how about this one? <laughs> oh, it's Monday. Oh, it's almost hump day. Oh, it's hump day. Oh, it's Thursday. It's almost the weekend. Oh, it's Friday. I mean, what the hell is that? Yeah, I how agree. are people going through life and without a purpose, aimlessly counting what day of the week it is because they're waiting for the weekend only to say it's Monday again? And that's sad. And that's what's so funny about it, too, is that I work and I have no delineation between weekdays and weekends. I mean, because we work because, you know, if you're listening to the show right now, you're listening on the weekend. You know that I work all week and weekend. And I think that that's funny, too, because people are always like, it's almost Friday. And it's like, well, I work Saturdays and Sundays, too. I mean, what's the difference on Friday? I mean, come on. And, and, and I think people have gotten to that point where they don't want to put the time in. And I think going back to the concept of entrepreneurship, think about it. Even if you're a student listening tonight to the show and you're in college or you're in high school, your entrepreneurship, your deal is to be responsible for going to school, taking care of your business, getting to that next level and figuring out what you want to do after that. But it's not just sitting around. It's not watching other people do it on TV. It's not watching the Kardashians get married for the 50th time. It's not watching somebody getting divorced. It's not watching the biggest loser go out and lose weight. It's about if you need to lose weight, you go out and start working out and doing something for yourself. If you want to be out there in the limelight, then go figure that out. But don't watch other people do it i mean because i think that's what our society has become well, is a society of people watching other people do work and and maybe kind of a corollary to that maybe we can get into this a little bit more in the next segment it, you know talk about uh, you know standards of physical beauty and, and standards of success you know we lionize these people who are you, you know they're they're billionaires or they're you know supermodels whatever and and i think a lot of people are in the mindset of, well i can never make it that far and why as well not even try yeah I have to tell you, I uh, am a shareholder in Berkshire Hathaway, and I go to the meetings every year. And Warren Buffett, who's one of the most successful entrepreneurs in my view, started with nothing. But he says a quote almost every year. He says, the difference between successful people and extremely successful people is that extremely successful people say no to almost everything. And they only say yes to their objectives and their purpose. That's what he says. And I think that in society today, people are addicted to yes. They say yes to everything. But what is the purpose of 2 million apps on your phone? I mean, what is that going to do for us? So, you know, the ironic thing is we're, we're distraction machines because we say yes so much when we should be saying no. There was a movie with Jim Carrey in it at one point in time. It was all about saying yes, and he wasn't supposed to say no. And no has great value. 
Um, no is underrated. And yes, I agree. When you're on purpose and you're on point, there will be things that come in your way, like like ships in the night. And you're not supposed to say yes to those things. They will take you off point and take you off purpose. So when we return, we're going to be talking more about the movement. What's going on in October? What's going on with the entire campaign of a billion entrepreneurs? As well as just refocusing on purpose and putting it in perspective for everybody listening tonight to help them find greater purpose. So stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. Be back in two shakes. I can lift you up. I can show you what you want to see and take you where you want to be. Get in here and give us your perspective. We're listening. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's Perspectives, we've been talking purpose. We've been talking how to find your purpose. We've been talking about how to advance that purpose and what it really means to be an entrepreneur. You know, a lot of times we think that entrepreneur means you're supposed to start a company or this and that, but that's not it at all. Really being an entrepreneur is about taking responsibility for your outcomes. And Rick Sapio has actually joined us and Bill and I in the studio to discuss a Billion Entrepreneurs Foundation. And I know for a fact that y'all launched a Kickstarter campaign recently. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yep, we are trying to raise awareness for this movement. And keep in mind, this movement's at the very, very beginning. And I think movements that are good they are like a drum beat and i've started playing this drum about 18 months ago and i keep beating this drum for the rest of my life and the drum beat is that an entrepreneur in every home will be better for the world so we created a kickstarter campaign to finish the editing of the film called a billion entrepreneurs and that film will have a theatrical release in 2015 but we need your help we want you to go to kickstarter buy the movie Show the movie to your friends and family. When it's done, you'll get a shrink-wrapped copy. There's also a way for you to get credits in the film itself. So there's a lot of opportunities on there. Uh, www.abekickstarter.org. And Abe stands for a billion entrepreneurs. And that's neat because basically what y'all are doing in this movie is you're uh, spotlighting um, on certain different types of entrepreneurs that have changed the world in some way. Yeah, when the producers of the movie first came to us, they wanted us to spotlight very successful entrepreneurs. And I said, wait a minute, let's spotlight people that overcame tremendous odds. And the star of the movie is a woman whose name is Ashley, who Good name. Was, yeah. Yeah, sexually abused as a child. She did not have parents. She was a drug addict and she was a teen pregnancy, both being born and she became a teen pregnant person. I don't know the right uh, terminology there, but she is now running an extremely successful business 20 years later. That's so awesome. she took responsibility and that's what the world needs. And she is the inspiration behind all of the film that we have to date. Like I said, over 150 hours. So she's the core. And then we found other entrepreneurs that have overcome similar obstacles to become successful and ultimately to take responsibility and live a purposeful life. You know, I think there's a a saying that people use a lot, and they say, you know, people don't change. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. And, you know, that's not right. I think there's a lot of comments and statements that we say as a – as a group of people, as human beings, that keep us on a certain level of achievement. And I think that those are meant to hold us back. And they're meant for us to believe that there is a ceiling. You know, one of my favorite comments is when people say, you know, sky's the limit, Ashley. Um, I hope sky's not the limit because I think there's a lot more out there than just the sky. I think it's an interesting concept how we've created all these pillars of um, drastic alignment as far as you can't have this or that's not going to work. You'll never have money and be happy at the same time. And you can never take what you love and make that into a career. Uh, All these things that you get told at an age and you either sop it up like, you know, you have toast and gravy there at the uh, Whataburger or you ignore it or you go against the grain. Well, uh, and Rick, you might appreciate this analogy. Uh, one of the few movies I've seen, Ashley, you know, I, I uh, surprised you for the past few weeks about movies I've actually seen, uh, in Rudy, 
You've seen that movie, right? Uh, you know, I've seen the, Rudy. The, the, the kid who uh, goes to uh, you know to Notre Dame and you know just to play football. Well, I mean, uh, the, the opening scene in the movie, or one of the uh, early on in the movie, anyway. You know, the priest tells him, you know, sorry, you're not cut out to go to Notre Dame. You you can't do this. How many times was that kid told you can't do this? Yeah, it's like computer software injected. People have heard things like money is the root of all evil. Oh yeah. Well, some of the happiest people I know have a lot of money, so I'm not sure why that's the root of all evil. But we get these. Uh, software packages installed in our brains when we're young or you know your dad was an alcoholic so you're going to be an alcoholic and it's just very sad you right now if you're listening you have the opportunity right now to stop what you're doing choose a purpose for your life and get in action you have that opportunity so Ashley you said everybody has a wake-up call this is your wake-up call ding, now ding, 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 ding. yeah I like that it uh-huh. is a wake-up call and it, it's so important it's just it's a way of life. And if you really think about it, if everybody does wake up and figures out their purpose, and your purpose doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to be creating universes, okay? We're not sitting there saying you have to create some sort of black hole device that does this. And we're not saying that you have to have the cure for cancer. But we are saying that you have to be responsible for what is your outcome and what happens and take responsibility and achieve that responsibility. And I think that a lot of times when we don't agree with that or we don't set our sights on that we lose sight and 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 life becomes really kind of humdrum and not so fun and it becomes depressing and you have to take a bunch of medication and you have to find the next thrill you know what do i have to jump out of a plane this time or what's the next thing that i'm almost gonna die but i'm gonna feel alive again you know it's like why can't you just feel alive every day by doing what you're supposed to be doing yeah one of the things we did to keep this really simple for everybody so there's no excuses is if you go to the website Again, it's abekickstarter.org. There's an entrepreneurial pledge there, and it's very simple. And it says, I, Ashley Burgess, choose to take responsibility for my life. And there's about seven lines. You read it, you sign it, you put it on the wall, and you're now in action. So that's one tiny step. After that, we'd obviously like you to watch the film and let your family and friends and coworkers watch it too so they can hold you accountable. So when you get off track... I believe accountability is huge. I think people forget about that in life and in marriages and things. My wife holds me accountable. If I come home late at night, I'm going to hear about it. So I think accountability is a really good thing. <laughs> I love that. I'm married to you. I understand. I was going to say, yeah, you can relate, huh? I, I can totally understand. And vice versa, I'm sure he could relate. You know, I, I think it's an interesting concept, and I'm very interested in being a part of the Kickstarter campaign as well because I think this has a lot of merit. I think this has it has a lot of teeth. It has merit. It really survives something because if you really think about this, I mean, really the reason why we're here is for our purpose. It's because of our passion. It's really to take responsibility for our our life. And I also think that things inspire people. Like one of my favorite films of all times is Field of Dreams. And that's one of my favorite films. Love it. And it's one of the best films ever made. And and why it is is because he figures out – I mean maybe – I'm not saying that your purpose is to to, to mow over a – you know. Um, a crop of, of corn, a corn crop, and, and basically build a um, a baseball field. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that our purposes sometimes can seem as odd as that. You can like realize your purpose and be like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can take this on. This is a lot to ask. Why do you think people don't do it? Sometimes it's just too much. It's like the whole idea of not knowing is sometimes easier. Ignorance is bliss. Yes. Fe- fear. Yeah, so you, you know, because, you know, uh, you prefer the devil you know to the devil you don't. Exactly. And the fear of having to actually step up. And I think a lot of times when we figure out our purpose, it's cool to kind of go with it because you don't have to really offset it at the very beginning because you're going to have enough fear throughout that process that it's it's going to keep coming up in waves. And, and another thing, too, is right when you figure out your purpose and you start going in that direction, there's going to be things that come in your way. And they're doing it on purpose to see how on focus and on point are you. Yeah. I once dated a girl. Again, I told you I got married very late in life. And she said she wanted to be a singer. And she didn't really have that great of a voice, but she wanted to be a singer really bad. And she realized as an accountant that in order for her to be a singer, she had to live in L.A. or New York. Long story short, she moved to New York for three years. She sang her heart out, never got a contract. But she will say to this day, those were the best three years of my life because she followed her dream. And now she's singing in another venue. It's, she's not a famous singer at all, but she sings every Sunday, and she loves it. She's on purpose. So I believe the thing holding all of us back from finding our purpose and choosing our purpose is fear. And to me, I believe that uh, there's a thing called courage, uh, and we all know what that is, right? So fear is what makes us poop in our pants. 
courage is what we do with poop in our pants. I like so, it. Yeah, so have courage. Figure out your purpose and get that fear out of the way. The totally. only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Okay, that's horrible. But anyway, that you was know a good job, about. Bill. That <laughs> was, was it, really good. Really, I thought yeah, it was I horrible. I liked it. It was but. good. It was good. Good job. No, I like it. Yeah, and it's true. It's all about fear, and it's the fear of the unknown a lot of times because we want to feel like we're a victim. A lot of times, we want to feel like we have no control over our life. And when we realize that the wheels come off and we have complete control, and we don't have to give it and designate it to anybody else, you don't have to designate it to some do representative that's going to take your control from you that you have it that can be a little fearful at the beginning but guess what it's only going to open up to an awesome life i mean your world starts coloring itself at that point in time and you don't have to color in the lines anymore you don't have to pick the right color you remind me of a great quote if everything seems under control then you're just not going fast enough and mario andretti said that oh so yeah we all look for control and we look for comfort and that's insanity that's a boring life Go for it. You have to go for it. Get out of your comfort zone. Move past. So everybody listening tonight, get out of that comfort zone. You know what? Because comfort zones can be very uncomfortable. Take the header off the high board. Do what you got to do. Yes. You know, make it happen. And, and just realize that you don't have to wait for someone else to do it. It's better to not wait for someone else to do it. And, and I think one of the best things to do is to quit watching what you think is what makes a person uh, a success. I think we all define our own success story. I mean, we all can create our own movie. We could all make the movie and be in the movie and, and create something. And I think that a billion entrepreneurs is really showing us that we can all be something. We all have that ability to have success. and We all have the ability for purpose. Yeah. It was a great show, Bill. I, I think it was a wonderful show. I learned a lot. Rick, thank you so much for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. And thank you for making a billion entrepreneurs relatable to everyone. Thank you, Rick. You're awesome, and I'm glad to have you on. I look forward to hearing more about the movement. I look forward to being a part of it myself. And again, if you missed that, the web address was? www.abekickstarter.org. Perfect. I will be going there myself here right after this. So stay tuned because next week we have a great show for you. And Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in, we'll be back in three shakes.